Hey, Brenton, you there? Can you take the uh, interview out of program four? There we go. Now I can hear you. I could just hear the interview. I couldn't barely make you out. How much longer does it have? Okay, that should be perfect. Um, well, yeah, we're going to have to pass on the next uh, commercial break, so. Well, we welcome you back here to Legion Field and uh, appreciate uh, the time that we had in the studio there with new Roseburg girls basketball coach Dane Tornell. That interview, if you missed any part of it, as you maybe wanted to step out and do something in between games of today's doubleheader, you can find it as a podcast online at 541radio.com where you can listen to uh, our sports podcast on the uh, – 1490 The Score podcast page. Getting ready for game two of our doubleheader. We will uh, kind of put the bow on our Dr. Kobernick Family Dental intermission show as we get ready for game two of a doubleheader. Roseburg won 11 to nothing in game one against the visiting Willamette Wolverines. As they improve, Roseburg does uh, now one two straight. They are now nine and three on the season. Willamette has lost three straight. They go to two and nine on the year. The Roseburg Indians will look to try and make it a sweep today against the Wolverines. That would be a big one for them if they can. We'll run through our Supercut starting lineups here for the Willamette Wolverines as we get into the first inning of our second game. As the first pitch comes in, and we are underway. It's Griffin Lavasser who will lead things off, facing off against Cody Johnson on the mound. The righty fired in a first pitch strike, and he'll miss low and outside for a 1-1 count. Cody Johnson on the mound, the righty. He's just kind of been a tough luck guy as he'll pitch outside for a 1-0 count, or excuse me, a 2-1 count. This season, Johnson... 0-1 on the year. He has made three starts. He's pitched 15 in a third innings. He's got a 4.1 ERA. And he'll miss low and outside for a 3-1 count. Sometimes just seems to be one of those guys that just doesn't seem to have things bounce his direction out there on the mound as he gets a swing and a miss for strike two here against Lavasser. We'll run through the defense and run through the starting lineup now here for the Lama Wolverines. Brian Vogel in his first year. His lineup has, again, Griffin Lavasser, who's leading things off at the plate with a 3-2 pitch coming up. He'll chop it towards short where Caden Johnson will make the play. Throws a crust, and he'll get Lavasser by a step. 6-3 to three, the put out, one away. Taking a look at the rest of your Supercut starting lineup for the Wolverines. Batting second, Jared Allen, Jarrett Allen, the left fielder. Dane Woodcook is the catcher, batting in the three spot. The cleanup hitter is Colby Bro, playing at first base. Five hitter Eli Peterson in right field. Tyler Moffitt, the pitcher, batting in the seventh spot. Chandler, a uh, sixth spot. Chandler Woods, the seven hitter, uh, playing at second base. John Gwynn, the third baseman, hitting eighth. And Easton Murphy is the shortstop batting in the nine spot. It's quickly an 0-2 count here against the two-hitter. Jarrett Allen, a called strike and then a check swing strike. And the third pitch of the at-bat just misses outside. So a 1-2 count here against Allen with one away and nobody on top of the first inning. Johnson's pitch taken towards short. Cody John or Caden Johnson, excuse me, in front of it throws across for out number two. A couple of putouts so far for the shortstop. Two down. 
Take a look around the diamond brought to you by Cascade Community Credit Union belong to Douglas County. Johnson on the mound, his battery mate Terrell Jacks behind the plate. Jonathan Stone is the first baseman for the Roseburg Indians. Luke Van Norman taking over at second base for the second game of our doubleheader. Caden Johnson's the shortstop this game. Zach Mandera at third. In the outfield from left to right, Doran Gillespie, Garrett Russell, and Jet Black. 1-0 pitch now for the three-hitter, Dane Woodcook. is called a strike. He evens him up at a 1-1 count with two outs and nobody on base. Top of the first inning here, another called strike by our home umpire, Tom Nielsen. It's Tom Nelson, excuse me. The one-two pitch, strike three called. And the Wolverines will go down one, two, three here in the first. A couple of ground outs to short and then a punch out to finish things off. That is a good vibrations strikeout. Through a half inning, it's a 0-0 ball game. We'll head to the bottom of the first on CBS Sports Radio, 1490, the score. This county is your home. But no matter where life takes you, Cascade Community Credit Union will be there whenever you need us. We'll be there with access to over 30,000 no-fee ATMs worldwide. We'll be there with an auto loan for your next vehicle. And when you're ready to make your dreams a reality, we'll be there with a home mortgage and one-on-one -on -one support every step of the way. Because commitment to our members is reflected in everything we do. Cascade Community Credit Union, there whenever you need us. So I heard Kelly takes a different one home every night. Yeah, I heard she took two home last night. I haven't heard she likes the small ones. Ha! <laughs> uh, no wonder she's in such good shape. At Pita Pit, with so many healthy options full of lean grilled meats and fresh veggies, and even small pitas for smaller appetites, you can have our pitas any way you want. And we won't judge. Pita Pit. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. Game two of our doubleheader into the bottom of the first inning. It's time now to take a look at our Supercuts starting lineups for the Roseburg Indians at Supercuts. Save time and check out styles online at supercuts.com. Leading things off will be Garrett Russell playing in center field. Caden Johnson, the shortstop, will bat second. The left fielder, Doran Gillespie, hitting third, followed by the DH, Brody Black, who is hitting for second baseman Luke Van Norman. The five-hitter is Zach Mandera playing at third. Cody Johnson, the pitcher, bats sixth, followed by the seven-hitter, Jonathan Stone, at first base. The catcher, Terrell Jacks, hits eighth, followed by the nine-hitter in right field, Jet Black. That is your Supercut starting lines for head coach Troy Thompson and the Roseburg Indians. On the mound, it'll be Tyler Moffitt to pitch for the Willamette Wolverines here in game two. Moffitt, a sophomore at six foot two. Good size to him. We'll see what kind of arm he has as he gets ready to square off with Garrett Russell to lead things off here in the bottom of the first. 0-0 ball game, first pitch. Tails low and inside to Russell, and we are underway in the bottom of the first. Roseburg won game one, 11 to nothing. They're trying to wrap up the doubleheader sweep. Back to the mound for Moffitt. He'll underhand to first as Russell will get thrown out, out number one. Lead off the bottom of the first inning. Next batter, number one four, away. Caden Johnson. And Caden Johnson will bat next for the Roseburg Indians. Johnson stands in, playing a shortstop here in game two with his older brother Cody on the mound. He hits the first pitch, he sees the third. And it is Gwynn that come up with it and throw across the diamond. And there's quickly two away for the Roseburg Indians Next against Tyler Moffitt. Five to three, the put out there for Johnson. Two down and Doran Gillespie stands in. First pitch for Doran, a called strike. A one count here for Gillespie. 
Breaking ball in the dirt, evens it up at a 1-1 count. Looking around the diamond, brought to you by Cascade Community Credit Union. Tyler Moffitt on the mound, his counterpart behind the plate, Dane Woodcook. Colby Bro at first, Chandler Woods at second. Easton Murphy at short. He'll backhand a sharp hit ground ball. Throws across the diamond. Did he stay on? Yes, he did. Bro stays on at first to get the final out. At third base to round up your look around the diamond defensively. John Gwynn at third here for Willamette in game two. In the outfield from left to right, you've got Jared Allen, Griffin, Lavasser, uh, Lavasser and Eli Peterson out in right. That'll wrap up the first inning. A 1-2-3 with some nice defensive plays for Willamette in the bottom of the first. We'll head to the top of the second in a scoreless ball game on CBS Sports Radio 1490 The Score. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Douglas County is your home, but no matter where life takes you, Cascade Community Credit Union will be there whenever you need us. Through every adventure, we'll be there with access to over 30,000 no-fee ATMs worldwide. Through every triumph, we'll be there every step of the way with a home mortgage. And through all life's little quirks, we'll be there with one-on-one -on -one support to get you back on the road in no time. Neighbors are there for each other, and that's exactly who we are. Cascade Community Credit Union, there whenever you need us. Start the top of the second. Score is 0-0, Roseburg and Willamette. Neither team able to get a hit or a runner on in the first inning. The 1-0 pitch here for Colby Bro. Takes outside on a breaking ball for ball two. Out to a quick 2-0 count against Cody Johnson on the mound. Johnson out of the windup. Fastball in, it goes towards short. Caden up with it and across the diamond for out number one. Third put out already in this game. For the shortstop, Caden Johnson, the younger sibling of Cody, who's on the mound. Quite the connection they've got so far here. Throw it in. Let Caden make the out. One away. The five hitter, Eli Peterson, will foul it back to the net for... Excuse me, uh, that one actually... I was looking down and saw it up in the net. And I think it bounces up off the dirt and off of maybe the gear there for Terrell Jacks. Ground ball right side will squeeze through, and there's your first base hit. Hard ground ball through the right side. Van Norman trying to cut it off just on the edge of the outfield grass. Could not quite get to it. And Peterson will find himself on base. First hit of the ball game. Man on with one away. First pitch in the dirt for the seven hitter, six hitter, excuse me, Tyler Moffitt, the pitcher. Looking to help out his own cause here, a 1-0 count for him. Quick look to first, the runner not off the bag yet. Cody now will come set. Out of the stretch, fires in, the fastball in there. Whew. Not sure where exactly that one missed. Looked right over the heart of the plate there. Must have been a bit low. Got the uh, tall hitter. This is the pitcher, Moffitt. He's at six foot two. He's got a little size to him. Ground ball right side. Could be a chance for two. Flip to second for one. Throw to first. They'll wrap it up. A 4-6-3 double play. Van Norman to Johnson to Stone. And the Indians get out of the second inning. No damage done with the one base hit. And it is no runs on one hit, no errors, nobody left on base. Still a scoreless game as we go to the bottom of the second. Roseburg and Willamette here on CBS Sports Radio, 1490, the score. This is for the person stuck in the office. The nine-to-fiver. The person who eats, sleeps, and drinks the outdoors. During business hours, you play the part. 
and in the mountains, you're home. But on the water, you go with the flow. This is for the angler, the hiker, the hunter, the adventurer, and you. Shop one of over 80 locations. Swimming season is finally here. But remember, respect the water. Don't swim and don't go in the water if it's under 60 degrees. Swimming in water under 60 degrees is life-threatening. It could cause hypothermia, which means your limbs paralyze and you can't get out of the water. Each day, the water temperature of the Umpqua River will be posted on kpic.com and kval.com and in the morning weather on KPIC. Respect the water. Know the temperature. Brought to you by the Respect the Water Safety Committee. Bottom of the second inning. Roseburg baseball is brought to you by Fisher's Hearth and Home, serving Douglas County for over 30 years with the largest selection of wood, gas, pellet, and electric stoves and fireplaces in the area. That is Fisher's Hearth and Home. Brody Black will lead things off the DH for the Roseburg Indians, batting for second baseman Luke Van Norman. 0-0 ball game. Roseburg went down 1-2-3 in the first. First pitch, a called strike for Tyler Moffitt against Brody Black. Temperature feels almost as if it has cooled down a little bit here at the ball field today. Started at uh, 60 degrees. Maybe I've just been sitting it for a little while now. Ball fouled back to the netting for Brody, and it gives him an 0-2 count. Take a look at what the old cell phone is reading here. O2 delivery from Moffitt. Brody gets underneath this one out towards center. Lavasser is uh, Lavasser is calling for it out there, and Griffin will get underneath it, out number one. Next batter, number thirteen, Zach Mandera. So one down, nobody on. Phone looks like it's still bearing a reading of sixty degrees. Here at Legion Field today, Zach Mandera takes a pitch just above the strike zone for a 1-0 count. Coming up later tonight here on 1490 The Score, we've got Blazers basketball for you. The ground ball sharply hit towards third. Gwynn didn't have to move, and his throw across the diamond is good for out number two. Well, he was right dead in his tracks, didn't have to go anywhere, and that one hopped up nicely right around just below his waist level, right at him. Fairly easy routine ground ball. And throw across the diamond for round number two. First pitch swinging. Up the middle. Cody Johnson will help his cause. A two-out single up the middle. One hopper through the infield and into center. Cody will get on with a two-out single. First pitch he sees, drives it right back up the middle. Nice job there for Cody. Gets things going. First hit against Moffitt for the Indians. Courtesy runner will come in for the pitcher. And up next will be Jonathan Stone. Stone trying to keep his season going. It has been a, a nice year for the Roseburg Junior. That is Mason Littlefield running at first for Cody Johnson. First pitch of the at-bat now for Jonathan Stone. It's in the dirt for ball one. I'll finish the thought there. Blazers basketball coming up. Tip off at 7.30 tonight for game one of their best of seven First round series in the Western Conference playoffs against the New Orleans Pelicans. They'll tip off at 7.30. Pre-game starts at 6.35 right here on 1490 The Score. So you can tune in for that. Catch the Blazers all throughout the playoffs here on The Score. Congratulations to Mike Gallego on winning our Black and Blue Bistro Blazers playoff ticket giveaway. Throw over to first. Littlefield back in safely. At the plate, a 2-0 count for Jonathan Stone. Mike and his uh, wife, Heidi, they seemed very excited to be headed to this playoff game. They had been trying to win Blazer tickets from us for some time, and finally they get the, uh, the golden prize of playoff tickets. So congratulations to them. Pitch in the dirt for a 3-0 count now against Jonathan Stone. 
And they'll have a chance to head up there tonight. A lot of festivities going on for the Blazer game, but the biggest part, can they get game one and hold on to home court advantage against Anthony Davis and the Pelicans? Should be a fun series there. 3-0 for Stone. He'll take right down the middle for strike one. So that's coming up tonight. Oregon State baseball going on this afternoon, but their schedule has been so wonky. They had their second game of a doubleheader yesterday postponed due to rain and lightning. It's a 3-1 pitch. Stone will hit it towards third, but foul. and It'll go to a full count. Three balls, two strikes with two outs and a man on it first. The Beavers yesterday, game two of a doubleheader. They won game one pretty big, hit five home runs. They had two home runs in game two and led 10-1 to one when the game was postponed in the middle of the second inning. They are picking that one up again here today, but because of all their schedule changes and the fact they're playing two games, we are not going to have Beavers baseball on the radio for you today. Pitch low and inside on the 3-2 count, and it'll walk Jonathan Stone. Littlefield with taken off on the pitch with the full count and two outs. So he was already almost a second by the time that pitch came in. Big batter, number 10, Terrell Didn't end up, end up mattering because of the walk. So Littlefield up to second. Stone drawing the first walk of the ball game. Gets on at first. Two outs, runners at first and second. Terrell Jacks will stand in. 0 for 3 in game one of the doubleheader for him. He'll try to turn this fortune around here. First pitch low and inside for ball one. If you missed any of that uh, run through what's going on on the radio today or I confused you because I was jumping from point to point, you can check out the broadcast schedule at 541radio.com. Called strike on the inside corner against Terrell. Evens it up. One ball, one strike. Head to 541radio.com and head to the 14-9 of the score homepage and click on the sports schedule tab. You'll be able to find out what's coming up on the radio. 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball in for a called strike against Terrell. 1-2 the count. You can also head to 541radio.com right now and watch this Roseburg baseball game live for free. So you can find it there and uh, watch this afternoon's contest against Willamette. Indians in a scoreless ball game. Bottom of the second. 1-2 pitch. Terrell fights it off. First base side. It goes foul. Right down the chalk line for Terrell, and it just ended up in foul territory. So he'll stay with a 1-2 count. Working against Tyler Moffitt here, who's trying to get out of this second inning without giving up a run. Moffitt had the first two outs on a pop out and a ground out, but a two-out single by Cody Johnson, and then a walk to Jonathan Stone as the Indians with runners at first and second. A 1-2 pitch for Jax. Got him handcuffed again. It goes to third, picked up by Gwynn. Throws the first baseman off the bag. But he comes off to make the tag. Terrell tried to run around the tag and dive for the bag. Goes down awkwardly, but he seems to be okay. And the Indians, unfortunately, will leave a couple of runners stranded. After two innings of play, it's still a scoreless game. The Indians, no runs on one hit, no errors for the Wolverines. Two men left on base. Head to the top of the third here on CBS Sports Radio. 1490, the score. Oh, yeah. That's the good stuff. You know what I like. That's right. Give me some of that. Sir, you're creeping out everyone else in line. Sorry. I, I mean, could I get onions on that? With all the lean meats, fresh veggies, and tasty toppings to choose from at Pita Pit, eating healthy is something to get excited about. Just not too excited. Pita Pit. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Zero zero ball game, the quote unquote nightcap of today's doubleheader between the Indians and the Wolverines. Joey Keyran here with you from Legion Field. Brenton Cranford 
Running the buttons on the radio side of things back in the studio. 0-0 zero, zero ball game. Each team with one hit so far in the contest. As we make our way to the top of the third, this game brought to you by Pepsi and Bigfoot Beverages of Roseburg. Leading things off, Chandler Woods for Willamette. Cody will fire in a first pitch strike to lead off things here in the top of the third inning. Seven, eight, nine hitters coming up for Willamette. Chandler Woods, John Gwynn, and Easton Murphy is a foul tip into the glove for strike two here for Woods. Playing at second base, Chandler back in. The 0-2 delivery from Johnson. Strike three right down the middle. He goes down looking, and that is another good vibration strikeout for Cody Johnson. One away, and John Gwynn will stand in next. First pitch from Cody in the dirt for a 1-0 count. John Gwynn only had one at-bat in the five-inning victory for Roseburg in game one. He was struck out looking by Zach Mandera, who finished with seven strikeouts in five innings. He'll take a strike, Gwyn will here. Watches it go by. It's tough here. It's the second game of a doubleheader. This is only his second at-bat of the game. That's got to be kind of tough as a hitter. It's a breaking ball outside. It goes to a 2-1 count. For this whole Willamette lineup, only made it through one, one time and then had uh, seven guys. So total of 16 hitters to the plate in that first game of the doubleheader. It's not a lot of opportunities for guys to get to swing the sticks. A 3-1 count here for Gwynn. Fastball, he powers it out to right field. But right to Jet Black for out number two. Two away. Cody Johnson does a nice job there. Doesn't let the hitter off the Except hook. Four, Murphy. Even though he was well ahead, 3-1 in the at-bat. Cody Johnson fires one in there and gets him to fly out. Two down, Easton Murphy, the nine hitter, stands in and the first pitch in the dirt for him. Murphy, like John Gwynn, the, uh, only had one at bat there in that first game. He struck out looking as well. The 1 0. Time called as Cody Johnson was into his windup and had to stop. A 1 0 pitch from Johnson. High and away. Cody up to 32 pitches so far, a little bit longer. Actually, he's had pretty, he's into the third inning, so that's not so bad. Line drive shot for Murphy is going to get into center field, and it's a two-out single. I was going to try and look at some of the numbers for Cody on the mound. The Feels like he's been throwing a lot of... Well, he's been throwing more strikes than he has balls, but uh, almost feels as if he is falling behind a few batters here early. A one out or two out single at the plate, back to the top of the lineup. A 1-0 count now for the leadoff man, Griffin Lavasser. Ball goes through the legs for Terrell. The runner's going to head up to second. Wild pitch. That one was in the dirt. Terrell couldn't knock it down and stop it, and so we will. Have a man in scoring position for the first time for Willamette. A 1 1 count at the play for Griffin Lavasser, and now a man at second base with two away. Our visit out to the mound for Richie Charles to go have a conversation quickly with Cody Johnson. Probably wanted to try and keep him in the right mind frame here. He's. Like I said, it's, it feels like, I mean, the numbers tell me that he's thrown 19 strikes to 16 balls, but it feels like he's been struggling to consistently pound the strike zone here. 1-1 one, one delivery for Cody. Fastball is low for a 2-1 count. So, you know, maybe the pitching coach, Richie Charles, heads out there to have a conversation. Just try and make sure, hey, man, throw your stuff. 
Stay on top of it as he fires in ball four. And he'll walk a batter. So a single and now a walk, and with two outs, Willamette gets two runners on base. Not the way you want to see an inning go. Cody will usually a very, you know, he's, he's always right around the strike zone. Throws a lot of breaking balls, so he'll get guys a chase, but seems like he's had to rely on the fastball a little bit more as he gets a strike across there here in today's ball game. Been relying on the, the straight one a little bit more often than the stuff with movement. The 0-1 gets him to swing and miss at a breaking ball. That one moved pretty wickedly. And Cody gets ahead 0-2. Jared Allen at the plate. The 0-2 count against him. He's 0-for-1 in the game with a ground out to short his first time up. Cody looking to wrap up the inning and leave two men on base. Just misses outside. A 1-2 count. From our vantage point up here, and we're kind of blocked of exactly where the plate is by the umpire and the catcher. But that one uh, got a few here in the press box. I think that could have been strike three. Breaking ball, fought off. Stays a 1-2 count against Jared Allen. Found out that the JV game goes in Roseburg's favor. 14-3 in five innings in game one of their doubleheader against Willamette. One, two. Over the top of the second baseman, Van Norman, into center field. They're going to wave around the runner. No, now they've got two runners at third base. They could have gone home with it to get the run, but a run will come in to score. The Indians just assumed that the runner at third was going to head to the plate, so they were cutting it off to go to third with the ball. And the runner going around third, that was Easton Murphy. He put on the brakes and was headed back to the bag, then saw his teammate was heading. Griffin Lavasser was going first to third, and they were going to have two runners at third base. Murphy turns it around and starts heading to the plate as the throw went to third. There was no chance for Zach Mandera to turn and throw to the plate. And Willamette will take a 1-0 lead on top of the Roseburg Indians. Runners on the corners with two outs. This has been a nice two-out rally for the Wolverines. Two hits here in the third inning. An RBI single for Jared Allen. Ball is going to get into left field here for Dane Woodcook, and he'll drive in a run as well. The two-out rally continues for Willamette. Woodcook takes that one left side between short and third. Neither guy able to get to it. Next batter number 15, Colby Bro. And two runs in here in the top of the third. Runners at first and second now with still two outs. They got the first two outs and then single walk, single, single. Has brought in two runs and Cody Johnson trying to find a way out of things here. Courtesy runner will come in. That is Austin Cavacci who will take over running at first. First pitch, a called strike here against Colby Bro. Pitch gets outside. It'll go to a 1-1 count now for Cody. A 1-1 delivery. Breaking ball carries outside. And it'll go to a 2-1 count. Goes to a 3-1 count as Cody's breaking ball misses low and now a quick visit to the mound for Zach Mandera from third base. And Zach now will head back to third. Cody just, he's been struggling through things here, trying to get ahead of batters, and he'll miss low to walk the bases loaded. Two outs, base is now loaded. Already a 2-0 lead for Willamette. Cody just needs one more out to try and get out of this one. Next batter, number five, Eli Peterson. First pitch, a called strike. 
against Peterson, Eli Peterson, who had a single in the second, but was left, uh, or actually got thrown out in an inning ending double play. Takes outside for a 1-1 count. Bases loaded with two outs at the plate, a 1-1 one, one count for Peterson. Check swing, he pulls it back, but it's called for a strike. One ball, two strikes, two away. Cody Johnson trying to get out of this third inning. A foul ball. On at first, Colby Bro. Courtesy runner Kavachi out at second. And at third, Jared Allen. The one-two pitch to Peterson. Swing and a miss. And that'll wrap things up with a runner on at first. No throw down to first base needed. A strikeout. A good vibrations strikeout to finish things here in the third. But the Indians got to get the bats going if they want to get some good vibrations going in the dugout. They trail two to nothing against Willamette here on CBS Sports Radio, 1490 The Score. This county is your home. But no matter where life takes you, Cascade Community Credit Union will be there whenever you need us. We'll be there with access to over 30,000 no-fee ATMs worldwide. We'll be there with an auto loan for your next vehicle. And when you're ready to make your dreams a reality, we'll be there with a home mortgage and one-on-one -on -one support every step of the way. Because commitment to our members is reflected in everything we do. Cascade Community Credit Union, there whenever you need us. So I heard Kelly takes a different one home every night. Yeah, I heard she took two home last night. I even heard she likes the small ones. Ha! <laughs> uh, no wonder she's in such good shape. At Pita Pit, with so many healthy options full of lean grilled meats and fresh veggies, and even small pitas for smaller appetites, you can have our pitas any way you want. And we won't judge. Pita Pit. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. Tough finish to the top of the third inning there for Cody Johnson and the Roseburg Indians give up two runs and give up the lead. Two to nothing, your scores. We start the bottom of the third. Jet Black leading things off, and the first pitch gets him on the front shoulder, and Jet Black will take the trip down to first. Third hit batter of the afternoon for the Roseburg Indians against Willamette. Two hitters plunked in game one, now one here in game two. Garrett Russell will hit for Roseburg, second time up for him. He had a comebacker to the mound in the first to lead off the game for the Roseburg Indians. So far, one hit in the game for Roseburg, four hits on the other side for Willamette. Throw over to first, Jet Black back in safely. Facing Tyler Moffitt still, he's in the game for his third inning of work. Game two has been moving along at a nice clip, although game one ended a little early. First pitch, pushes it first base side. That could be no man's land. Coming in to get it, the second baseman just in time to get Garrett. Will lay down the sacrifice bunt. Boy, he, he really pushed that one out to second base to move the runner up. He was trying to find that empty That's spot on the infield and see if he could Sneak one in for a base knock, does not, but he does the job, moves the guy up 90 feet. So Jet Black now at second base, hitting Caden Johnson. First pitch, a breaking ball for a called strike. Moffitt checking second, delivers in. The breaking ball in the dirt, knocked down nicely by Woodcook behind the plate. Woodcook able to get to the baseball quickly, and that holds Jet Black out at second. One ball, one strike here against Johnson. Caden takes a strike. Caden grounded out to third back in the first inning. Only hit of the game so far for Cody Johnson. 
One two delivery. Moffitt, breaking ball, pulled towards short. Takes a nice high hop for Murphy, but he's got to make a quick throw, and it's not going to be there in time. Infield single for Caden Johnson. Murphy at short just didn't get it transitioned across the diamond fast enough. He fielded it cleanly, had time, but it took a little while to get to him, and then he took a little while to get it out of his glove, and that allows the Indians to get a second runner on base. So two runners on. Doran Gillespie will bat. Roseburg trailing 2 to nothing, trying to cut into it. A ball to left field has a chance to get down. It will, and he gets by in left field. Allen can't handle it. It'll roll all the way to the warning track. The Indians will tie the game. Coming around at third, Caden Johnson headed to the plate. No throw, and he's in, and Roseburg squares this one up at two on the error in left field by Jared Allen. A single for Doran Gillespie. He takes second on the error. Scoring are Jet Black and Caden Johnson. Next batter, number 20, Brody Black. Jet would have scored. Caden Johnson comes in on the air. And so the Indians now on top, or excuse me, now tied 2-2 in this ball game. First pitch to Brody Black is inside for ball one. Brody gets underneath one, high in the air, foul territory, left field side. And overrunning the ball is Jared Allen. He's trying to track, track it down, and it tails back over the top of him, back towards the infield, or, well, back towards the field of play. He overruns it. It does land in foul territory. But it was a chance at an out, and he can't make the play. The 1-1 delivery now for Brody. Takes a breaking ball low. Two balls, one strike. Two-one pitch for Brody. Line drive shot, hits hard to short. It gets by into center field. Blocking the way out there was Gillespie. He kind of danced in front of that sharp ground ball. And that might have disrupted Easton Murphy as short, and he couldn't get his glove on it in time. And Brody Black will get a hard ground ball right up the middle for a base knock. Next batter, number 13, Zach Mandera. Gillespie only moves up to third. He thought about trying to round and head for the plate. If he had done it from the get-go, he might have had a chance to tr come in to score. It looked like it was bobbled a little bit by Lavasser in center field. But he doesn't make the decision right away, and he's only able to get the third. One out, runners on the corners. Roseburg is tied 2-2 with Willamette. Zach Mandera going to try and make it a lead. That ball just foul down that left field line. Just foul by about six inches. Not much more than that. Mandera just a little bit in front. And it'll give him an 0-1 count against Moffitt. The Indians starting to break through here in the third inning, much like Willamette did in the top of the third inning against Cody Johnson. First and third with Brody Black at first and Doran Gillespie at third at the plate. Zach Mandera, who grounded out the third base back in the second, stands back in with the 0-1 count. Look to third, no throw back to first. On the mound, Moffitt stepping towards third base, then turning and looking back to Brody at first, and neither runner looking to go anywhere. 0-1 delivery coming up here for Mandera. The delivery in, catches the outside corner for a called strike two. No balls, two strikes here against Zach Mandera. Moffitt's delivery. Swing, that one in the air to right field. Not very deep. Tagging up is Gillespie. Catch made. Unable to get set and throw to the infield quickly is Peterson. He'll 
Fire it in. It's cut off, but the sack fly works. Zach Mandera will drive in a run with the sack fly. Two away, and the Indians take a 3-2 to two lead. Next batter, number nine, Cody Johnson. Just didn't get set up underneath it to make a throw back to the infield. Peterson running towards the foul line to be able to make the catch. And then he just took far too long to throw back into the infield. And scoring easily was Gillespie. Cody Johnson is going to go right side. Peterson underneath it for the final out. But the offense bails out Cody as they get three runs and put Roseburg in front. Three to two is your score as we're through three innings of play. We'll head to the top of the fourth. Roseburg in front by one here on CBS Sports Radio 1490, the score. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Douglas County is your home, but no matter where life takes you, Cascade Community Credit Union will be there whenever you need us. Through every adventure, we'll be there with access to over 30,000 no-fee ATMs worldwide. Through every triumph, we'll be there every step of the way with a home mortgage. And through all life's little quirks, we'll be there with one-on-one -on -one support to get you back on the road in no time. Neighbors are there for each other, and that's exactly who we are. Cascade Community Credit Union, there whenever you need us. Roseburg Baseball on CBS Sports Radio, 1490 The Score, is brought to you by Clint Newell Auto Groups. Now the Indians fight their way back and take a 3-2 lead after three innings. Three runs there in the bottom of the third for Roseburg to overtake the two runs that Willamette put up in the top of the third inning. Cody Johnson out there for his fourth inning of work. He'll face... With six, seven, eight hitters, Tyler Moffitt leads things off. Pitcher versus pitcher matchup here. The first pitch, fastball in for strike one from Cody. Last year, Roseburg in the doubleheader played at Willamette High School. Strike called on the inside corner. Roseburg uh, was able to come back in both games. Willamette actually led early on against Roseburg in both games of that doubleheader last year. As a comebacker right back up the middle. Johnson almost got his glove on it, but couldn't quite get it above his head fast enough to try and get the leather. And that is a single, leadoff single for Tyler Moffitt. Get a man on base to lead things off here in the fourth. Cody now has given up five hits here in the ballgame. Five hits for Willamette, four for Roseburg. Pitch head high in the air towards second base. Calling for it is Van Norman. Bobbles it a bit, but he pulls it in. Looked like he had it at first. Then as he was kind of bringing his arms down, the ball kind of bobbled around and does hang on to it. That one a little bit interesting. One out. Next batter, number 10, Jack Gwynn. Up next will be John Gwynn, the uh, third baseman. He hits it up the middle, a chance for two. They get the out at second. It's Caden Johnson that takes the play all himself at second, throws the first, and Stone there for the double play. So a double play to end things off here in the top of the fourth inning, and Roseburg hangs on to their 3-2 to two lead. Come back for the bottom of the fourth when we return. 3-2 to two your score on CBS Sports Radio 1490, the score. This is for the person stuck in the office, the nine to fiver, the person who eats, sleeps, and drinks the outdoors. During business hours, you play the part, and in the mountains, you're home. But on the water, you go with the flow. This is for the angler, the hiker, the hunter, the adventurer, and you. Shop one of over 80 locations. Swimming season is finally here. 
But remember, respect the water. Don't swim and don't go in the water if it's under 60 degrees. Swimming in water under 60 degrees is life-threatening. It could cause hypothermia, which means your limbs paralyze and you can't get out of the water. Each day, the water temperature of the Umpqua River will be posted on KPIC.com and KVAL.com and in the morning weather on KPIC. Respect the water. Know the temperature. Brought to you by the Respect the Water Safety Committee. Bottom of the fourth inning, still a 3-2 ball game in favor of the Roseburg Indians. Joey Keyran here with you. Cody Johnson getting another ending, ending double play out of the Willamette Wolverines. They did it in the second and once again here in the fourth. Leading things off for Roseburg in the bottom of the fourth inning, Jonathan Stone. First pitch swinging, well hit out to left field. Going back is Allen. He's watching this one over the top of him, and he comes up with the basket catch over the shoulder. Well, that was impressive. Jared Allen making the catch in left field over the shoulder. Willie Mays type lost his cap as he was chasing that one to the warning track. Jonathan Stone had another big blast there, but not quite it's enough behind it. And, man, Allen running underneath that one like a wide receiver in football. One out, and the pitch outside to Terrell Jacks. Man. That was uh, impressive. Pitch inside. It'll go to a 2-0 count now for Terrell. Terrell in this ball game, 0 for 1. Leg kick and delivery in by Moffitt. It pitches low for a 3-0 count. And it is a four-pitch walk issued to Terrell Jacks. One out, one on. For Tyler Moffitt, that is his second walk issued in the ball game. Courtesy and runner will come on. Jay Stoffel will run. Running at first base will be Jay Stoffel. At the dish, Jet Black stands in. He was hit by a pitch to start out the third inning when Roseburg put three runs on the board. Stoffel will dive back into first with a pickoff play. So I was saying in the last half inning, top of the fourth, while Roseburg last year in the doubleheader against Willamette came up with a couple of comeback victories, and they're doing it here in game two of today's doubleheader. As Black goes left side, high in the air, charging in, diving for it. He trapped it out in left field. Allen couldn't get to that one. May have dived a little bit too early, and I meant to say dove. Might have dove a little bit too early out there. He was on the grass and kind of came stuck in the turf, diving for that baseball. And if he had maybe taken another step, he might have had a chance to get to it as he slid a little bit. His glove trapped it on the ground. So maybe just a split second later, if he makes his dive, he might have had a chance to get to it. But it's a bloop single Stop for Jordan Jet Black. Number one, Garrett Russell. He'll get on with a base hit. Up to second goes Jay Stoffel, who would come in to run for Terrell Jacks. And the Indians have runners at first and second with one out. Top of the lineup, Garrett Russell at the plate. Squares to bunt, and he fouls it for strike one. Oh, 1 count here against Russell, the leadoff man. He's 0 for 1 in this ball game. He's bunted twice. No, excuse me, he had a comebacker in his first at-bat as he takes in the dirt for ball one. 1-1 one, one count. He had the comebacker to the mound in the first inning, and then he did have a push sack bunt to second base in the third. 
Sits in there with a 1-1 count. Corner's in on him because he squared to bunt a few times. He will square late, and he takes it back for ball two. Pitch was high. Out at second base is Stoffel. Out at first is Jet Black. Indians with two on and one away, leading 3-2 to two in the bottom of the fourth. 2-1, it is another bunt. It goes third base side off the mound. Can't handle the baseball. Moffitt trying to pick it up, ends up on his heels, falls to his rear end as he missed on the first attempt to try and get the baseball. And if you miss the first time, you're probably not going to catch Garrett Russell down the line. Next batter number four, Keaton Johnson. So an infield bunt single for Garrett. Loads the bases. Stoffel at third, Black at second, Russell at first, and Caden Johnson at the plate. First pitch swinging, sharply hit down the third base line. It gets in just behind the bag. One run comes in. Coming in from second, Jeb Black will score. Russell up to third. It's a double for Caden Johnson. Drives in two more runs for the Indians. That one sharply hit lands just behind the bag at third, down the chalk line into left field, foul territory. And he brings in two. Stoffel scores from third. Jet Black comes in from second. First to third for Garrett Russell. And the Indians get two more runs in here in the fourth, and they lead five to two. Still just one out. Doran Gillespie will bat next. First pitch, swings, and it's high in the air. Not going to bring in a run. This one on the infield, the first base underneath it. Colby Bro will make the catch. So two down. That was an RBI sack fly opportunity for Doran Gillespie. He had one of those in the first game, too, and just could not come up with anything to get out of the infield. So two down, up to hit Brody Black. And he'll take the first pitch in the dirt for ball one. A 1-0 delivery coming up here for Brody. He'll call time. Seventh hitter to the plate here in the fourth inning for the Indians. A 1-0 to pitch outside for a 2-0 count. Heard that uh, South Medford was beating North Medford 10-5 in the top of the sixth inning of their game one of their doubleheader. As a strike on a breaking ball called against Brody gives him a 2-1 count. So if that score held, South Medford would... Continue to build their lead on first while Roseburg would get a half game lead on at North Medford for second. Ball pulled towards third and it eats up. Gwen at third goes through his legs to left field. Two runs come in to score. Russell and Caden Johnson both come in on the air at third base on the ball hit by Brody Black. E5 on that one. First error of the, excuse me, that is the second error of the ball game for Willamette. And the Indians get two more out of it. So they now take a 7-2 lead on top of the Wolverines. First pitch for Zach Mandera. Pulls it third base side. It'll get in with a base hit into left field. He'll get on to first. Up to second goes Brody Black. First and second, two away. Seven to two, your score. Next batter, number nine, Cody Johnson. And Derek going after the first pitch there, taking it into left field. Cody Johnson will stand in. First pitch to him is strike one. Called there by the home umpire, Tom Nelson. Johnson one for two in the game. Flew out to right field his last time up. The 0-1, strike two taken.
No balls, two strikes, two away with runners at first and second. Johnson line drive into center field. It'll get down right center. Lavasser in front of it. Black is headed up to score. The throw to second. Not going to beat Cody Johnson. He'll get in with a double. The tag just a bit too late. And Cody gets in with the two-bagger to drive in two more for the Indians. Brody Black scoring from second. Zach Mandera up to third. Indians add another one there. Eight to two now your score. Five runs in here in this fourth inning. They've batted through the lineup. Up for a second time is Jonathan Stone, who led things off with a fly ball to left field. He'll take a strike on the first pitch. The 0-1 count. Moffitt, longest inning of work by far, gets another one across to called strike two. Doing pretty good through the first couple of innings. It allowed just one base hit through the first two. Got touched up for three runs in the third inning, and now another five, and his team is now trailing. Stone gets underneath this one, out towards right field. High fly ball, and the catch made by Peterson. That'll wrap things up. It's never fun to be the first and third out of an inning. Jonathan Stone, unfortunately, that is the case. Roseburg gets five more runs across here in the fourth inning. They take the 8-2 lead as we go to the top of the fifth here on CBS Sports Radio, 1490 the score. Oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. You know what I like. That's right. Give me some of that. Sir, you're creeping out everyone else in line. Sorry. I, I mean, could I get onions on that? With all the lean meats, fresh veggies, and tasty toppings to choose from at Pita Pit, eating healthy is something to get excited about. Just not too excited. Pita Pit. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. All got a nice cushion now for Cody Johnson on the mound. He had two wins against Willamette last year. Pitched in two games, went the distance in both of them, all seven innings for both the victories. And he is looking to try and get one here against Willamette. It'd be his first win of the season. It's the fifth inning. Roseburg leads 8-2. to two. Today's ball game brought to you by Bymart. Some action going on in the bullpen for Will Lamont. Might have a Shelby and Miguelena construction call to the pen coming up here in a little bit for Will Lamont. First pitch in the dirt for a 1-0 count. Easton Murphy at the plate. He'll swing through for strike one. Gives him a 1-1 count to lead things off here in the top of the fifth inning. Legion Field, baseball for you on a Saturday. The 1-1 pitch is low, 2-1 the count. This is the first Saturday doubleheader in league play that the Indians have had all season. Usually the schedule goes single game on Tuesday, double on Saturday. Is a pitch low, 3-1 count now for Murphy. But with the weather, the way it's been this spring, yet again, Roseburg is, unfortunately, this is the first time they've actually been able to play a doubleheader scheduled on a Saturday. Comebacker to the mound, gloved by Johnson. And he made it look pretty. Got the glove down there, flipped it up to himself, and then into the throwing hand. He fires over to first base to Jonathan Stone on a little nifty play there on Easton Murphy. One to three, the put out, one away. First pitch, breaking ball low. Ball one now against 
The top of the order, Griffin Lavasser is up to hit. 1-0 delivery. Chops towards third, but foul. And he'll have a 1-1 count. Lavasser is 0 for 1 in this ball game. Drew will walk his last time up and scored a run. 1 1 pitch outside. Two balls, one strike now. An update for any Oregon Duck fans on their baseball game today. In a moment, this ball lifted out to center. A long run, but Garrett Russell is there. Long run out there for the center fielder, and he gets underneath it for out number two. He has made a couple of long runs to get to baseballs. Had one earlier in this game. Has one there. Foul ball on the first pitch for Jared Allen. That'll be strike one. Allen had a nice defensive play in the bottom of the fourth inning, robbing what could have been extra bases for Jonathan Stone, but he had an error back in the third defensively that allowed the Indians to score a couple of runs. So it's been a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. So he takes strike three. That was a quick one, two, three strikeout for Cody Johnson. And he wraps up things here in the fifth. A one, two, three inning. He needed that. And the Indians continue to lead eight to two as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base in the top of the fifth for the Wolverines. Back with the bottom half of the inning coming up next here on CBS Sports Radio 1490. The score. This county is your home. But no matter where life takes you, Cascade Community Credit Union will be there whenever you need us. We'll be there with access to over 30,000 no-fee ATMs worldwide. We'll be there with an auto loan for your next vehicle. And when you're ready to make your dreams a reality, we'll be there with a home mortgage and one-on-one -on -one support every step of the way. Because commitment to our members is reflected in everything we do. Cascade Community Credit Union, there whenever you need us. So I heard Kelly takes a different one home every night. Yeah, I heard she took two home last night. I haven't heard she likes the small ones. Ha! <laughs> uh, no wonder she's in such good shape. At Pita Pit, with so many healthy options full of lean grilled meats and fresh veggies, and even small pitas for smaller appetites, you can have our pitas any way you want. And we won't judge. Pita Pit. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. Come back here for the bottom of the fifth from Legion Field. Still Tyler Moffitt on the mound, but it looks like we have uh, had some defensive changes elsewhere. That was actually Austin Cavacci that struck out on three straight pitches First against the Cody Johnson. He now goes to left field for Jarrett Allen. Try to get you a look at how things change here defensively. On the mound, Moffitt. Terrell Jacks will take a pitch inside for ball one. So I believe that it looks like Eli Peterson also out of the game out in right field. And a new player in as Terrell fouled that one off of his front leg, crumples to the ground while the ball rolls on the infield grass. And leaving it up at a 1-1 count for him. Leading things off here in the fifth. That is Allen Kane that has gone out into right field. And Terrell really uh, seems to be hurting a little bit from this one. As we'll have a bit of a break in the action here. Checking around the rest of the diamond just to see if there's been any other changes. Looks like it's still Bro and Woods on the right side of the infield. Murphy 
and Gwynn on the left side of the infield. You got Cavacci in left. Lavasser still in center, and uh, Kane now into the game in right field, and I believe that is still Woodcook at uh, catcher. Ground ball to third. Bobbled at third, but he still hung on to it. Throws across the diamond, and the throw is low. And so Gwynn going to be charged with the error as Terrell Jacks will get on to lead things off here in the fifth inning. Stoffel will run at first base. Stoffel will come in to run for the Indians here and takes over for Terrell Jacks. First pitch swinging for Jet Black will be strike one as he fouls it off. O one one delivery coming up for Black. Moffitt comes set, delivers. A breaking ball in for strike two. Black one for one in the game. Hit by a pitch and a single. He has scored twice. The 0-2. Line drive up the middle. It goes off the glove of the second baseman diving for it. Woods can't glove it. I'm surprised he even got to it. A line drive shot right up the middle. A nice diving attempt. It goes off the glove and squirts into center field. A single for Jet Black. Up to second base goes Stoffel running for Terrell. And the Indians runners at first and second. Nobody out. Two on. Top of the lineup, Garrett Russell back up. Bunt single for him last time at the plate. Swinging here, he'll foul it off. So we got the defensive changes for you. Still still, uh, still Moffitt on the mound, although there was an arm warming up in the bullpen, it looked like, for Willamette, and I believe that was... Uh, might have been Joey Barr. They're going to give us a couple of warm-up pitches here. My, looks like might have tweaked himself a little bit out there. So he is still in the game, good to go after the warm-up pitch. The 0-1, the count against Jet Black. Or excuse me, this is Garrett Russell. Black's on at first. Stoffel out at second. The 0-1, a breaking ball in for a called strike against Garrett. 0-2 count, nobody out, two runners on. So I was going to tell you the... Uh, Update for Oregon State base or Oregon baseball. They've postponed Oregon's game against Washington today up in Seattle. The 0-2 high and inside for ball one. Looks like the Ducks and the Huskies will play a doubleheader coming up tomorrow with first pitch coming up at 10 o'clock. Not sure if we'll be able to cover both of those on KQEN or not. Russell. Lifts one to right field. Everybody retreats back to tag up. And that'll be a pop out to right for out number one. That's Alan Kane in right field getting his first put out of the day. One out, still runners at first and second. Roseburg leading eight to two as we're here in the bottom of the fifth. They could get, uh, let's see here, four more runs. They could walk off with the victory in five innings again. Caden Johnson at the plate took the, takes the first pitch, a breaking ball low for a 1-0 count. So no Ducks baseball for you fans today as they'll move, move it to tomorrow and play a doubleheader in Seattle. 1-0 pitch. Caden Johnson sends this one sky high in the air behind home and behind the plate. Woodcook able to make the catch for out number two. Two down, the Indians looking for a rally. Think about number 11, Doran Gillespie. Doran Gillespie will hit. He is one for three in this ball game. Had an RBI single in the third and or came around to score eventually. Takes low in the dirt for ball one. 
Also, I think I got an update on some Oregon State uh, news. Looks like they will not play a doubleheader for Oregon State baseball today. Pitch inside for a 2-0 count. We weren't going to be able to carry the Oregon State baseball game for you, but it looks like they've decided to play the continuation of game two of yesterday's doubleheader. And then once they're done with the continuation of that game, they are not going to play a doubleheader today. They're just going to play two games against Missouri State. Pitch called for a strike against Gillespie gives them a 2-1 count. Gillespie at the plate, the 2-1. Swing and a miss. Took a big cut at that one. Got fooled on the breaking ball. So a 2-2 count. Two down with two runners on. Gillespie underneath it. Shallow right field. Kane coming up underneath it, and he'll make the catch. So the Indians leave two runners stranded on base. They still lead 8-2, to two, but it felt like they were really shooting to try and get enough runs to end this one early there in the fifth. They come up empty. No runs on one hit, one error, and two men left on base. We head to the top of the six. Roseburg leading 8-2 to two on CBS Sports Radio, 1490 The Score. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Douglas County is your home, but no matter where life takes you, Cascade Community Credit Union will be there whenever you need us. Through every adventure, we'll be there with access to over 30,000 no-fee ATMs worldwide. Through every triumph, we'll be there every step of the way with a home mortgage. And through all life's little quirks, we'll be there with one-on-one -on -one support to get you back on the road in no time. Neighbors are there for each other, and that's exactly who we are. Cascade Community Credit Union, there whenever you need us. First batter at the top of the sixth inning for Willamette, Dane Wood. Cook. Top of the sixth inning coming up. Cody Johnson still on the mound for the Indians, and he rockets in a first pitch strike against Dane Woodcook. And the pitch low to go to a 1 1 count. Roseburg leads 8 to 2. Joey Keyran here with you from Legion Field. Game two of our doubleheader going on. Ground ball back to the mound. Cody Johnson fields. Now we'll run to first. And underhand flips to Jonathan Stone for the out. Next batter, number 15. So one out, nobody on base. Lamont looking to try and avoid losing their fourth straight game. They've got some work to do, though. Swing and a miss. He had second thoughts, it looked like, on that one. Colby Bro at the plate. Check swing. He tried to pull it back and could not quite get it. And so he went around for the first strike. Takes a pitch in the dirt for a 1-1 count. Cody Johnson delivers a fastball right down the middle. Called for strike two. Colby Bro. 0 for 1 in the game with a walk his last at bat. Check swing. He went around there. The pitch was in the dirt. He'll get thrown out at first by Terrell Jacks. And that is yet another good vibrations strikeout for Cody Johnson. Good vibration solutions for home theater and automotive audio. You can feel it at good vibes. Alan Kane will step in for the First time, takes over for Eli Peterson out in right field. Took the first pitch for ball one. The 1-0, fastball blown by him. One-two pitch. 
Excuse me, 1 1 pitch. Now it will be a 1 2 count. Swing and a miss out of Kane. Johnson looking for a quick 1 2 3 inning. Kane's 1 2 is in the dirt. A 2 2 count. Roseburg coming up in their next game. So swing and a miss, strike three. That'll wrap up things. A one, two, three, sixth inning for Cody Johnson, who's gotten stronger as this game's gone on. We'll talk about the upcoming schedule for the Indians as we head to the bottom of the six. Eight to two, your score in the top of the six. Four Willamette, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. The Indians lead by six here on CBS Sports Radio 1490, the score. This is for the person stuck in the office. The nine to fiver. The person who eats, sleeps, and drinks the outdoors. During business hours, you play the part. And in the mountains, you're home. But on the water, you go with the flow. This is for the angler, the hiker, the hunter, the adventurer, and you. Shop one of over 80 locations. Swimming season is finally here. But remember, respect the water. Don't swim and don't go in the water if it's under 60 degrees. Swimming in water under 60 degrees is life-threatening. It could cause hypothermia, which means your limbs paralyze and you can't get out of the water. Each day, the water temperature of the Umpqua River will be posted on kpic.com and kval.com and in the morning weather on KPIC. Respect the water. Know the temperature. Brought to you by the Respect the Water Safety Committee. Oh, well, we come back here for the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be Chandler Woods to take over on the mound as we get a uh, Shelby and Miguelena call to the pen. Woods takes over for Tyler Moffitt. They just switch positions. Moffitt goes to second base. And Woods takes over on the mound. So it'll be Woods on after Moffitt tosses five innings of work. We'll get you his line here in a moment. Brody Black will be the first hitter to face the new pitcher, although Chandler Woods pitched in game one. First pitch to Brody is outside for ball one. Swinging hard hit out to left field on the run. Allen, oh, no, excuse me, that is not Allen out there. That is Kavachi in left field now. He jumped to get to a baseball, and it hit off of his glove awkwardly and falls out of his glove. That's a ball that it looked like he had a pretty good beat on, and for some reason he jumped to get to it. I think he thought it was going to carry a little bit further, and it really didn't seem like it did. And so that one, an error out in left field. On that is uh, Kavachi now out there in right field, or looks to me left field, and he commits the error. So Brody Black on at first, Zach Mandera will hit. Now batting number 13, Zach Mandera. Mandera, one for two in the ball game with an RBI on a sack fly. Chases a pitch upstairs. Evens it up at a 1-1 count. Tyler Moffitt. Ten hits, eight runs, four earned. Two walks, no strikeouts. And he hit one batter. That's his final line there. 2-1 count for Mandera. Two-one delivery here for Woods. Mandera hits this sky high left field. Kavachi circling underneath it. He'll make the catch this time, and he comes down without number one. That one was rocketed into the sky. 
Kavachi had plenty of time. In fact, he was almost dancing around like a crab out in left field, trying to figure out exactly where that one was coming down. One out. Up to head next will be Cody Johnson, looking to pick up his first win of the season on the mound, looking to help himself here at the plate. He'll take outside for ball one. Cody, two for three in this ball game. Had a double his last time up on a ball hit to right center. Stretched it to a double. It was pretty close. He'll hit a ground ball here to short and right through the legs for Easton Murphy into center field. Another error there at the shortstop position. Up to second goes Brody Black. And the Indians will have runners at first and second with one away. Courtesy runner coming in for the pitcher. And that Stone. probably going to be Mason Littlefield. It is. Up to hit Jonathan Stone. First pitch swing and line drive shot. Dies in shallow center field. They're going to send Brody Black around third to come in to score. He will. And bobbled in center by Lavasser. Can't get the throw back in quickly. And going at first to third is going to be Littlefield running for Cody Johnson. And Jonathan Stone will get his first hit of game two of the doubleheader. And it brings in one run for the Indians. And they now go up nine to two. I'm wondering here, they may have called Brody Black out at the a runner out. They might have appealed at third base saying maybe he didn't touch the bag. Huh? So I'm not sure. There was some conversation there. I missed it. We'll have to check on that one here. I, I've got it at 9-2, to two, but it may not have counted the run there. I'm not sure. Breaking ball is high to Terrell Jacks here. So it's a 1-0 count for Terrell. Swing and a miss gives him a 1-1 count. So I think what it sounds like I'm hearing is that there was on, on appeal, they're going to call Brody Black out. May not have touched third is about the only thing I can think of. That would be out number two. Swing and a foul tip into the glove for strike two for Terrell. We'll try and get some clarification for those of you. Tuning in for today's game. As it stands right now, Cody Johnson, or the courtesy runner, Mason Littlefield on at third, Jonathan Stone out at first. And the Roseburg Indians with two outs against him, a 2-2 count for Terrell Jacks at the plate. Two-two pitch, Terrell gets the bat on it out towards right field, shallow right field. It'll fall in and that's a base knock. Terrell will drive in Littlefield from third. So that'll count. So I guess that'll make it a 9-2 score. Barring that run actually counting for Brody Black, I still got to get a clarification on that. It's better to so Terrell Black. Jacks on at first, courtesy runner for him. And that is Stoffel out there to run. First pitch misses to Jet Black for a 1-0 count. Runners at first and second. Jonathan Stone moved up 90 feet as uh, Littlefield scored for Johnson. Black gets underneath this one out to center field. Going back is Lavasser. Now he's got to charge in, and he'll make the catch on the run. 
That'll finish things off here in the seventh. So, yeah, that run most likely does not count for Brody Black, as that looks like it'll do it. So we'll try and get some clarification and figure out exactly what happened. Nine to two, our scores. We go to the seventh here on CBS Sports Radio, 1490, the score. Oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. You know what I like. That's right. Give me some of that. Sir, you're creeping out everyone else in line. Sorry. I I mean, could I get onions on that? With all the lean meats, fresh veggies, and tasty toppings to choose from at Pita Pit, eating healthy is something to get excited about. Just not too excited. Pita Pit. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. Oh, we go to the top of the seventh inning. The Indians need just three outs to secure the sweep against the Wolverines. And Cody Johnson's first pitch is taken by Tyler Moffitt, the shortstop for out number one. Caden Johnson comes up with the play one away. So found out that... uh, Trying to bring Tanner Woods. Found out that from what I can gather, it sounds like Brody Black was called out on appeal that he didn't touch third. So there's that. So we will, uh, it is in fact a 9-2 to score here in the top of the seventh with one out. At the plate right now with a 1-1 count, Chandler Woods now the pitcher. Strike two called. One ball, two strikes now against Woods. One, two just misses for Johnson. Two, two delivery from Cody. Got handcuffed, chopper to third, backing up, now charging. The throw to first by Mandera is good for out number two. Two down, it'll go to John Gwynn to hit here. The third baseman. First pitch, misses for ball one. Cody Johnson looking for the complete game victory. That ball fought off right side, foul down the first base line. The 1-1 from Johnson, breaking ball, called strike two. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that will do it. Another good vibration strikeout for Cody Johnson, and the Roseburg Indians come away with a 9-2 victory on top of the Willamette Wolverines. And the Indians will get the sweep, and that'll keep them at least in second place. May give them a little bit of a cushion. They could possibly gain on South Medford if the Panthers are unable to pull off a sweep against North Medford. Roseburg wins two at home against Willamette today. A big one for them. 
We'll take a look at this one when we come back, and we will uh, take a look at what's coming up next for the Indians. It's a lot to get to as we get to the uh, Roseburg Disposal postgame show. That's seventh inning brought to you by Chuck Swarman Family Auto Repair. Are you ready to go where life takes you? Back with the postgame show after this here on CBS Sports Radio, 1490 The Score. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. This is for the person stuck in the office, the nine to fiver, the person who eats, sleeps, and drinks the outdoors. During business hours, you play the part, and in the mountains, you're home. But on the water, you go with the flow. This is for the angler, the hiker, the hunter, the adventurer, and you. Shop one of over 80 locations. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. You know what I like. That's right. Give me some of that. Sir, you're creeping out everyone else in line. Sorry. I, I mean, could I get onions on that? With all the lean meats, fresh veggies, and tasty toppings to choose from at Pita Pit, eating healthy is something to get excited about. Just not too excited. Pita Pit. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. At Brook Communications, our job is to get results for your business, period. We can take your story and tell it to the people you want to reach in a way that compels first-time clients to become repeat customers. We get them through your door so you can do what you were meant to do. Proclaim your sales message to the largest audience of any media company in Douglas County. Brook Communications dominates through the power of five radio stations and 541radio.com. Results amplified. Locally owned. Brook Communications. From Legion Field, this is the Roseburg Disposal post-game show. Let them make the run to the dump for you. Joey Keyran here with you as the Roseburg Indians get the victory here today. Your final score, 9-2, to two, wrapping up the doubleheader sweep for the Indians, taking game one. Final score there was... 11 to nothing, 9 to 2 here in game 2 and the Roseburg Indians sweep the Willamette Wolverines to improve to 6 and 2 in conference play and at 10 and 3 on the season. Well, game two had some interesting moments from here and there, but uh, overall, pretty productive one for the Roseburg Indians. Well, Emma scored two in the top of the third to take a 2 0 lead, but the Indians responded with three in the bottom of the third to go in front for good. Added five runs in the bottom of the fourth, another run in the sixth, and they pull out the 9 2 victory. Cody Johnson goes all seven innings to pick up the victory. Didn't at times feel like his sharpest outing, but he got the job done holding Willamette in check. Tyler Moffitt taking the loss, pitching five innings in today's ball game. So the Roseburg Indians pick up the wins and the very important ones for them as we move forward in this season. We'll take a break here. We're going to put together all the final numbers for you on this one. They're kind of a couple of weird moments there towards the end so uh, my scorebook got a little out of hand but uh, we're getting it all figured out here and we'll bring it to you when we come back we'll have all the offensive statistics pitching numbers and our Mahalo heating and air conditioning player of the game. Roseburg Baseball Today has been brought to you by Bymart and again by our friends at Chuck Swarman Family Auto Repair. Are you ready to go where life takes you? Be back with more of Roseburg Baseball here on CBS Sports Radio 1490 The Score. So I heard Kelly takes a different one home every night. Yeah, I heard she took two home last night. I haven't heard she likes the small ones. Ha! <laughs> uh, no wonder she's in such good shape. At Pita Pit, with so many healthy options full of lean grilled meats and fresh veggies, and even small pitas for smaller appetites, 
you can have our pitas any way you want. And we won't judge. Pita Pit. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. Our job is to get results for your business, period. We can take your story and tell it to the people you want to reach in a way that compels first-time clients to become repeat customers. We get them through your door so you can do what you were meant to do. Proclaim your sales message to the largest audience of any media company in Douglas County. Brook Communications dominates through the power of five radio stations and 541radio.com. Results amplified. Locally owned. Brook Communications. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. This is your Roseburg Disposal post-game show. Let them make the run to the dump for you. That's Roseburg Disposal. Joey Kieran here with you as we wrap up today's action here from Legion Field. The Roseburg Indians play a couple of nice games against the Willamette Wolverines and pick up a couple of wins. Final score in game two, 9-2. to two. Looking at your Garrettson Building Supply scoreboard update. Taking a look at how the scoreboard looked for the Indians today. For Willamette, two runs on five hits. They committed five errors here in game two. That is a total of nine errors total in the ball game. On the uh, For the Roseburg Indians, nine runs on 12 hits in game two. No errors. The Roseburg Indians play a clean game defensively. Cody Johnson picks up the victory for Roseburg here in game two. His first win of the season. He goes to one and one on the year. Five, uh, seven innings worked, five hits allowed, two runs, two errors, or two runs, two earned runs, oh, two walks and seven strikeouts for Cody. On the other side, taking the loss, Tyler Moffitt, who pitched five innings, gave up ten hits, eight runs, four earned, two walks and no strikeouts. He hit a batter as well. Chandler Woods came in to pitch an inning of relief, gave up two hits, one run, it was unearned, no walks, no strikeouts. Roseburg Indians picking up the victory. They improved to, again, 5-2 and two in conference play. Actually make that 6-2 uh, and two in conference play. Willamette falls to 1-7 and seven on the year in the Southwest Conference. Roseburg now 10-3 and three on the year into double digits for their win total. Taking a look at some other scores from the, South Med, uh, from the uh, Southwest Conference. South Medford won game one of their doubleheader, 15-11 against North Medford, so they stay undefeated in conference play. And South uh, goes to 6-0. and They continue to have that lead on the Indians for first place in the Southwest Conference. So they are continuing to hold on to the edge. We'll see if we can get an update on Game 2 before we check off the air here. But uh, Roseburg still staying up there at the top of the conference standings with South Medford. They were hoping to maybe gain a little bit of ground, but so far North Medford hasn't helped them out. As for uh, North Medford, that will give Roseburg a little bit of a cushion on top of the Black Tornado heading into their showdown coming up on Tuesday. Roseburg and North Medford were tied at 4-2 and two coming into the day, but with the loss, North Medford fell to 4-3, and three, and Roseburg went to 5-2, and two, so they pick up a one-game lead on top of the Black Tornado with the uh, with the victory in game one of our doubleheader. And then Roseburg with the win in game two. We'll see what North Medford does in their second game 
of their twin bill against the Panthers. But uh, that's looking around the conference just a little bit there. Also, South Eugene and Grants Pass squaring off today. We'll see what happens in that one. Uh, we could be rooting for Grants Pass in that one to see if that helps out the Indians build a little bit more cushion on the rest of the conference as well. Well, taking a look at your offensive numbers from today's ball game. For Willamette, end up with five hits in the ball game. Jared Allen goes one for two. Dane Woodcook goes one for three. Eli Peterson one for two. Uh, Tyler Moffitt goes one for three. And it was uh, Easton Murphy who goes one for two as well in the ball game. RBIs for Jared Allen and Woodco uh, Woodcook as well in this ball game. As for the Roseburg Indians, they uh, rack up 12 hits in this ball game, and everybody ended up with a hit in this game. All nine batters end up with a base knock. Garrett Russell, one for three with a run scored. Cody Johnson, or excuse me, that is Caden Johnson, two for four with two runs, two RBI. Good day for him. Doran Gillespie, one for four with an RBI and a run scored. Brody Black, one for four with a run scored. Zach Mandera, one for three with an RBI. Cody Johnson, two for four with an RBI. Jonathan Stone, one for three. Did draw a walk in the game. Terrell Jacks, one for three. Had a walk and an RBI. And Jet Black goes two for three with two runs scored in the ball game. So we'll look at your offensive numbers for the Indians here today. Big wins, and we'll see if the Indians can carry that momentum. Roseburg now with three straight victories as they head into a series with uh, North Medford coming up on Tuesday. Roseburg taking on the Black Tornado Tuesday afternoon here from Legion Field. It's scheduled to be a 4.30 start time for that one. We will have to be keeping an eye closely on the weather as that uh, I do believe there is rain in the forecast starting uh, late tonight into tomorrow, and then we'll see where things go from there. Looks like rain in the forecast for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday and Wednesday. Maybe the game gets pushed to Thursday. Not sure what they'll do with that if that is the case. But we'll be keeping an eye on it, and we'll definitely update you on any schedule changes that may happen for the Roseburg Indians as they get ready to take on North Medford next week. Roseburg will have North here at home, and then they uh, will head on the road to South Eugene for a doubleheader against the Axe coming up next weekend. Yeah, up there at South Eugene High School. Well, folks, uh, that is about to wrap things up for us here today. I haven't got any updates on that South Medford doubleheader against North Medford uh, to pass along to you. So, unfortunately, I think we're going to be about that. Uh, last we heard from the JV game, the Roseburg JV team was winning 10-3 to in the fourth inning on top of Willamette uh, out uh, at the JV field. So, Looks like they could be on their way to a sweep against the Wolverines today as well. Been a lot of fun to bring you the action here today. want to say thanks to the Lambo Wolverines and first-year head coach Brian Vogel. Very accommodating for us to try and get ready for today's broadcast. Made things easy on us up here in the booth. So big thanks to the Wolverines. I want to say thanks to athletic director Russ Bolin, head coach Troy Thompson, and the entire Roseburg baseball program for allowing us to bring you another season of Roseburg baseball here on the score. Been a lot of fun here today at the ball field. Thanks to Brenton Cranford back in the studio for his production work today as he helps keep us on the radio and sounding smooth. And as always, a thanks to you, the fan, for tuning in for today's broadcast because, of course, without you, I'm just a guy sitting here talking to myself. I'm Joey Keyran, folks. We hope that we'll see you and talk to you again coming up on Tuesday when the Roseburg Indians are scheduled to host the North Medford Black Tornado. That is a 4.30 start time, which means our pregame show starts at 4.15. You can catch it online at 541radio.com or... Tune in for the action right here on Douglas County's home for sports, CBS Sports Radio, 1490, The Score. Okie dokie.